Hello and a warm welcome to the 77%. Thanks for joining the program for Africa's youth. I'm Wanjiko Mwara and you are welcome. Our show this week is a street debate special. And if you follow African politics, you'll know that Nigerian elections are just around the corner. On February 25th, Nigerians are electing a new president. President Buhari is stepping aside after two terms in office. They are electing new senators, MPs, and also new governors and leaders in state elections. With the NSARS protests in 2020, we saw thousands of young people taking to the street and making their voices heard. The question is, will the voice of the youth be reflected in the upcoming elections? My colleague Flourish Chukura spoke to some young voters, politicians and activists in our street debate in Abuja. This week on the 77% street debate. When you look at the presidential candidates that we have presently now, most of them, they are octogenarians. It's not about age, it's about what you have upstairs and what you can do. They never give detailed reports of what they want to bring to Nigeria and based on what they've done, what do we expect to see? Because the past actually dictates the future. This week, the 77% is in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. Nigeria's elections are coming up really soon. And if you speak to most Nigerians, they'll tell you that these elections is not going to be business as usual. Now, in the past few years, Nigeria has experienced some turbulent times, from the economy to security and even to education. But this time around, it seems like many young people will have a chance to decide their own future. On the run-up to the elections, we've heard that about about 70% of the new voters are between the ages of 18 to 34. So we are here to find out from young Nigerians what they really want from these elections. And I'm going to start with Nana. Nana, you are a first time voter. Why did you decide to vote in these elections? Well, um, at the earlier time, uh, last election I was 15 and now I'm 18. So I think uh, it's the right time for me to vote. And do you think that your vote is going to count? Not sure. Okay, you are not sure. Yeah. Now, in 2015, we saw the Not Too Young to Run movement. 2020, we saw NSARS. Is this a sign that young people are beginning to participate in politics in Nigeria? I'm going to come to you, God bless. All right, absolutely, because we got the Not Too Young to Run bill done in uh, 2018. Uh, that was signed by the president and we also got the electoral reforms bill done in 2022 so what it means is that i'm excited that we have a first-time voter so all the work that we've been putting in is because we want more first-time voters to come in and participate in the process so i think young people will want their voices to be heard and for me i believe that this will be an election that will be determined largely by young people's participation okay aisha i see you're nodding your head do you agree with what god bless just said Yes, I do agree. I feel like in the last decade um, to now, we have seen a lot of changes in when, how youths react to politics. You know, before, I would say, like, even I myself was apathetic to the political um, situation in Nigeria because I believed my vote didn't count. And it didn't matter because whether you voted or not, it, was, it, was, it wasn't going to matter. They would come and promise and go away. But I believe right now, our voice matters, like whatever we do matters. What we decide, who, who sits on that set, decides whether Nigeria would become a global, global, what would I say, a global power or not. Okay, now I'm going to go to Kabiru Husseini because you are very much involved in politics. Absolutely. Yes, so why do you think that, why did you think it was important for you as a young person to get involved, um, you know, as a party member of ADC? You know, um, uh, the reason why is that um, looking at the situational issues of uh, what is happening today in this country, almost everything has been deteriorated, you understand. And also, you know, the youth, they are the engine growth of development in any nation, you understand. So they are left behind. That is why we penetrate into the politics in order to prove to these 
leaders, you understand that we, the Nigerian youth, we have the potentiality and talent to make this country a better place. You understand? Because when you look at the key development of any nation globally, it was the youth, you understand, that are uplifting the country to greater high. You understand? That was the reason why we will not allow ourselves to be deteriorated by the so-called leaders that are unable to provide, you understand, the basic necessity of life in this country. Okay, so that leads me to my next question, which is obviously why we are here. What do young people in Nigeria really want? And I want you to just give me one point, one major point that you think that young people really want. Um, I'll start with you, Chidima. Nigerian youths want a secure nation. They want affordable education. They want overhauling the educational system. Okay, so I said one point, and you said security. Okay, I'll go to you now. So I think the youth in our time and now, we need unemployment to be solved. We want the issue of unemployment to be solved. Okay, so unemployment is a major issue for you, Dapor? Healthcare. Healthcare because our health is not terrible in Nigeria at the moment and um, it costs a lot to foot one's bill medically, right? And if things don't change, we'll lose many people due to things we can easily fix. Okay, thank you. So we've had um, security, we've said we had unemployment, healthcare. We want free and fair election so that the right candidate will emerge. Free and fair elections, all right. Um, God bless. I think the average Nigerian youth want a country that works, where they can live out their potential and that they can travel anywhere around the country and not feel like they are not welcome. They just want to be included. They want a country that is not religiously divided. They want a country where I can be in Kano and I am and I'm free to engage and be heard. They want a Nigeria where they don't need to know who is the head of the civil service agency for their letter to go through the system. They just need a country that works. That's all. Okay. A country that works and I also heard inclusion there. Okay, Aisha. A revamped educational system. In the last, I would go back to the last decade again because we have seen the educational infrastructure and the educational system in Nigeria is really failing behind. So we need actually change in educational systems in Nigeria. Okay, educational systems. Um, Ibrahim, so what do you think Nigerians want? To me, I think that uh, the most important thing we need as youth in this country is engagement. We need a functional system that will carry everyone and will give everyone a genuine sense of belonging in the country. Because if you look at Nigeria, you find out that the country is divided, the northern and southern part of Nigeria. There is that mistrust and friction between the north and southern part of the country. So we need this synergy to feel that we are on the right track, so we need a functional system. Okay. Um, I'm going to come to you, Hosea, but I'm changing the question. Now, you're very involved with uh, politics. You help to train, to encourage young people to uh, participate in, basically, in the country and to be more patriotic. Do you think that we are there yet? Like, do young people finally have a say? Or can, are they ready to finally make a decision for the country? Okay, yes, we actually have the number. But I wouldn't say we are there yet. 70% of the population of Nigerians are youth. Yet, when it comes to political participation, you can count to the number. Let's talk about the answers. Even with, it, with the answers, you saw that if you would compare the number of people who came out to rally, it is very small, very minute, compared to the teeming number of youths that we have. So I would say yes. There are a lot of us who are willing to go out there and change the narrative. And yet, there are so many who are yet to understand the office of the citizen, to understand their, their rules, the rules each and every youth needs to play in changing the narrative. So we are not there yet. We still have a long way to go. Okay, so you talk about political participation. So I guess this best begs the question, do, do Nigerian youth believe in elections? Do elections actually work? I'm going to come to you, uh, Dapo. Hmm. I think that um, it's far from saying it works. And classical example is what happened after NSAS. Two months after NSAS, there was a, an election in Lagos, and the turnout was 9%. Right? One would have thought that with the agitation with NSAS, people would come out to vote en masse. We did not see that happen. So do elections really work? We're not there. Um, 
with the recent developments and laws that have been put in place, it looks like things might be better next year. Um, if it does go well, then it would make more people want to come out and vote. Chidima, do you have a, do you think that elections in Nigeria work? Of course, elections in Nigeria work and will work because this is an institution we already have in place where we use the process to elect and bring in our leaders. But so far, the seven years of APC, you can attack with the amended electoral act that you, you can vote and your vote will count. Okay, thank you, Chidima. You mentioned the APC, we'll come back to that. But I want to come to you now. Do you think that elections work? I mean, you're a first time voter. This is your first time going to the polls. Do you actually believe in the process? Well, sincerely, I would say we, it's the election, the electionary system in the country is a work in process. For me, I, I think this time it will work. Even if it doesn't, it doesn't work in the past, I think we have another opportunity now to make it work. Okay, so we are getting mixed opinions here, but I want to find out from you guys, apart from the elections, obviously there has to be a way that Nigerians hold their leaders accountable. How can Nigerians, how can we as Nigerians hold our leaders accountable. And I'm actually going to come to you, Ibrahim, because you are a politician and a potential leader of Nigeria. So how can we hold you accountable when you're in office? Well, um, I would like to start by saying there has never been a time like this in the history of this country. I believe if the leaders messed up, they know what to expect from the people. Because the youths are tired of the, pro uh, the uh, field economy, insecurity, all kind of uh, things, we are tired of it. So if I happen to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I believe I will make the people as the center of my governance. Okay, but with all your promises, how do we hold you accountable? So I'll be accountable to whatsoever I promise to do. I will make sure I deliver my promises. And again, the people that are going to surround me are going to be people of probity, integrity. Okay, I'm, I'm going to, thank you, um, Ibrahim. I'm going to come to you, Aisha, because I, I, I heard you saying something. I think we can hold our, our, even our current government, we can hold them accountable by, we actually have the platform. We have the media, we have town hall meetings, we have, we have connections that actually connect us with the right people. If you want, for example, a leader in my community has, signed off on it on a infrastructural project that he hasn't done i can actually go to the constituency like in our constituency there's always an office that you can go to and you can report show and show that this is actually not working take pictures take it the media is an, a very strong tool for us especially we're in the technological age if your if your leader is not doing anything talk about it, tell him, send him messages. Surprisingly, almost all our leaders are on Twitter, or on Facebook and all of that. We can actually talk to them. Yes, make sure, get people to support you, sign a bill, all of that. It's possible, we've seen the not too young to run happen. So everything is possible if we really work hard on it. The bedrock upon which democracy is built is accountability. So one of the fastest way and easiest way is to use the Freedom of, Inf of Information Act, FOI. Uh, one of the tools available to young people today is that we can raise an FOI and of course there are lawyers who are willing to take those cases up if we want to get information from certain departments of government, MDAs and ministries. What it says is that those MDAs and ministries are, are necessarily going to respond to your request to provide information. So I'm saying it to young people today. The goal is not just to vote. The goal is to vote, ensure that the votes are counted, but after the votes are counted, we would now look at the manifesto that these candidates have shared, just as they are sharing right now. And after that, within the first three months, six months, one year of their administration, we can use the Freedom of Information Act. We'll go to the different ministries and ask and say, what have you done concerning this or that? That is how you hold government accountable. Also, using the social media, using uh, town halls like she has said, also engaging with your constituency offices. These are how you hold government you know, uh, uh, leaders accountable for the okay. process. Thank you, thank you, God bless. Dakbo. Um, I think that increasingly we are seeing leaders pay attention to what people are saying. It's, it's hard, it's not as simple as it's been said. So FOI, right, 
how many of them respond to it. Um, social media, how many of them actually respond to those posts. Their phone numbers, how many of them actually work. So there are channels that should work are not working. Um, maybe sometime later it would work. But I think that what, what needs to be done is to increasingly keep knocking and keep pushing hard to get things done. Yeah. Okay. Aisha, you want to say something? So, um, Dapo, I would like to tell you, you know, you want to create change. It doesn't happen in a year. It doesn't happen in a short time. Let me tell you something. Do you know when the Not Too Young to Build, Not Too Young to Run bill started? No. But it, it, it took years. So you have to, I have to say, Nigerians actually have to work hard on it. It would disappoint you. It would, it would actually break your heart and it will even kill your energy. But the thing is that Nigeria is ours, you understand? We cannot just give up and let it go. We have to be there for it. So even if it will take years, they will not respond to your tweets. But you know one thing that we actually forget is that we're a collective, we're not alone. God bless. I mean, I, I look, I'll just say this. When we started the Not Too Young to Run bill, they told us, they told us it was impossible. Ah, come on, you're wasting your time. But guess what? We got it done. 2019, we gathered in Abuja and said we're going to deliver electoral reforms to Nigeria. They said we were wasting our time. But 2022, the president signed the bill. What does it tell you? It means that when we come together and we make a commitment to making something better and we keep working at it, it is going to be done. I remember we had to protest right here at the Unity Fountain. We had to walk to the National Assembly. We knocked on doors. We spoke to legislators. We called them. Guess what? We put their phone numbers online. And people called them. And we sent them text, message, text messages. They read our text messages on the floor. And when it was time to pass the bill, guess what they did? They invited us because they knew the work that we have put in. So young people never give up. Keep knocking, keep pushing, and they will respond. We've heard that young people should be patient. But what is the reality on ground, um, Dapo? Do you think that people are really optimistic? The position of things on the ground, things are bad. I mean, we know security is a mess, right? Even here in Abuja, you can't move very freely. Um, Health care is terrible. Nigerians have to spend out of their pockets. Recently, I think last month, there was a survey by NBS that says that about 70% of Nigerians were multidimensionally poor. Right, that means that both healthcare, um, source of income, poverty, education, things are actually bad. So clearly things are bad. We can't, we can't lie about that. And sadly, we trust that things get better, but it wouldn't be all of a sudden things changing because Nigeria is in a very tight situation. Our expenditures are really high. Revenue is very low. Um, subsidies gulping more than what we are budgeting for states. So things are bad and things would not change all of a sudden. Um, so yeah, over time, things might get better, of course, with people that we elect into office, putting in place the right policies and the right systems, things will get better over time, but it won't be all of a sudden. All right, so um, you mentioned there that the next president obviously has a lot of work to do. It's not going to be an easy ride. So I'm going to come to you, Chidima, because you are actually in on the APC Presidential Campaign Council. And apart from your party, as a young Nigerian, what kind of leader do you think that Nigerians need at this critical point? We need to understand where we are before and where we are now. It was not easy and we encountered a lot of challenges. First, we came into office, faced a whole lot of things. You know, the developed nation, we are able to sustain the economy because they have already existing institutions that back up with their social welfare. They were able to be where, where, we, they, where they are. And we, where we are, was as a result of we are underdeveloped and we have a lot of challenges. And ahead of the 2020 election, we should be looking at who can give us this with their track record, with their antecedent, because you cannot have Hand over a, a, an entrepreneur, um, enterprise or an endeavor to somebody when you know that the CV and the experience doesn't correspond to the management and the administration. I, I don't agree with what you demand, sir. Okay. You understand? Because um, you see, a country like Nigeria, what we need, we just only need vibrant, energetic youth that will take the country to the promised land. You understand? When you look at the presidential candidates that we have presently now, most of them, they are octogenarians. 
you understand they are all age it's not about age it's about what you have upstairs and what you can do and if you look at the top contenders i don't think okay let me not be partisan with this whole thing but we need to understand the fact that ahead is not about age it's about what can you offer and what you offered us before with that we track what you possibly can give to us thank you very much okay um so chidima and husseini have brought up a very important point that i think that is you know a topic of discussion among many nigerians do we need someone with experience and age i actually agree with chidima because in all the 17 presidential aspirants we've seen, actually, has ever, have you, anyone ever noticed that they never give detailed reports of what they want to bring to Nigeria because they always leave us in the dark about what's happening? We've seen all of the people that are coming to now or the top contenders. The one is a former governor, two actually are former governor, one is a former president, and one is a former senator. Oh, he is a senator, I think. So all of those, we've seen what they've done. You understand? What are they doing now? What are they planning to do? And based on what they've done, what do we expect to see? Because the past actually dictates the future. And even if we get, do we have a youth there? Okay, thank you very much, Aisha. So uh, I would like to cut something, uh, we are overlooking it, and it's so important to who win Nigerian election um, come 2023. I would like to cut uh, Yusuf Maitama Suli. He said, our, um, uh, for any progressive movement, there's always a need for the wisdom of the old, as well as the dynamism, the radicalism, and the youthful exuberance of the young. So I think we have to look at uh, all the 17 presidential candidates who carries the youth alone. We all agree that they are all uh, old people. So uh, who among them carry vibrant people to go alone? So, um, you know, I'm the guy wearing the CSO hat. So I like the fight going on with the politicians. That's great. Um, but what Nigeria needs today is not just enthusiasm. You see, enthusiasm is not a factor of production, right? Um, age is not a factor of production. So the idea, therefore, is that when you look at what the different candidates have put on the table as their manifesto, Nigerians can question what they have. That is a document that we can follow. I'll stop you on that point, God bless. Hosea, yeah. you want to say something? I agree with him, with, uh, yes, my friend over there, that uh, manifesto is important. However, manifesto, it, it's one thing for you to say you are going to do something, then it is another thing for you to actually do it. So we have seen over the years that they always come up with beautiful manifestos. Everybody. Beautiful manifestos. But when it comes to implementation, it's zero. So character is very key. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hosea. Um, Chidima. I want to buttress more what he said because we, you are, our incoming president is going to be at the helm of affairs to take decisions and policies. And when you check the characters of some of the persons we have, some are devious and some doesn't want the office, as Nigerian youth, let's think. Not only that we are checking your track record, when you left office, what was the pace? What do we experience? What happened? We also need to check it and up till now. And we also need to understand that we should remove emotions from politics and then of 2023. We must fix the real fact. Who is going to deliver the Nigeria we want? And let's think again. I like your point. Who is going to deliver the Nigeria we want? We really, really have to wrap up now. I believe Nigeria has come to a critical juncture. And here you would see that I'm, I'm involved in running the campaign of someone, the gubernatorial candidate. And I have seen where people who ordinarily would shy away from electioneering are telling me that for the first time they are willing to go out of their comfort zones to vote in 2023. And you would even see this clearly where you see young people now trying to not even collect money but rather spend out of their own pockets to make sure they campaign for people. 
Okay, thank you very much, Hosea. I think we can all agree to Hosea's point that Nigeria is at a critical point. I want to thank the panelists for joining us today and you, our viewers, for watching. If you have any comments, definitely write to us. We'd like to hear from you. Um, for now, I'm Flourish Chukura. Thank you so much for watching. Well, a thank you, Flourish, and all the 77 percenters who took part. We have heard what young people want from their next leaders and how difficult it can be to make sure these leaders' promises are kept. To all Nigerians, we wish you good luck in the upcoming elections. Please feel free to drop us a line on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. We always, always want to hear from you. We leave you with some music from Davido. Steady moving, I'm just living life. And so many people in my business, so many joking I. My face is easy as a face mask. In the front of my head, steady chasing my paper. Sipping my tail with no chase. My steps are guided by the hope.